Okay. Well, when I got the phone call to join, <laughs> join it still makes me laugh. To join the opera, um, I thought it was to choreograph the show. My my manager at the time rang me and said, um, Austra Opera Australia have just called and they want you to be involved in Orpheus in the Underworld, which I didn't know anything about. And I said, oh, well, they want me to choreograph it. And they said, no, they want you to be in it. And I laughed. I laughed. I still laugh about it. I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. But um, I didn't say yes straight away because I'm gonna, I've never had a singing lesson, let alone a operatic singing lesson. You know, I'm just a hack. Um, and I've kind of learned on the job. And so I was working with Anthony Warlow at the time in Annie. So I know Anthony's had experience with the opera company. And so I knocked on his door and said, can I come in and talk to you? I said, look, the opera have asked me to join them for Orpheus in the Underworld. Do you reckon I should do it? And he went, what? They've asked you. And I went, yeah. And he went, ha! <laughs> and so it didn't instill me with confidence. And I said, what do you think? He went, go and do it. They're great people. They have fun. He said, and play in a different world. And so I didn't say yes straight away. I then went and knocked on Nancy Hayes' door and said, the opera want me to do an opera. And she didn't hesitate. She was like, don't do it you'll have fun. It's the first time in 15 years, I'd say, or maybe more, where I've walked into a rehearsal room and I knew Mitchell Butel a little bit, but just socially at shows and concert foyers. Um, and Jonathan Biggins the same, just a little bit, but no one else. So there's 50, 60 people in a room and I was the new kid at school. Even Mitchell had done an opera before, he did the Mikado. So I was out of my depth. I was nervous and really, really nervous. I don't sound like an opera singer, I sound like me. Um, but I gather they hired me to be me, and so I am, but it still makes me laugh that I'm sitting here at the Opera House in the Australian Opera. I was worried that, because in musical theatre, I mean, I love what I do and I respect everybody in our business, but I've just had this preconceived idea that the opera is highbrow, and we're like carny folk, you know, the musical theatre people. Um, and that, that was one of my biggest worries, that they were going to look at me as a commercial artist coming into their world. Um, which is subscription based and you know to people from the North Shore um, and <laughs> um, and I was really concerned about that that I wouldn't be welcomed but it's been absolute opposite they've got the dirtiest senses of humour and they are really down to earth and they're so cool and so relaxed and chilled out and um, yeah, and dirty jokes they tell dirty jokes they're just like us they're more carny folk than I am <laughs> Rochelle Durkin, who does a lot of work at the at the Met now in New York, she bases herself in New York, has come over to do this and is hilarious. If you think um, a Patsy from um, Ab Fab, like um, Joanna Lumley, she's like the operatic version of that. She's hilarious. She takes the Mickey out of herself. She sings like a bird, and she's tall and, and statuesque and gorgeous. Um, Andrew Brunston is Orpheus who has a voice which will throw you across the room when he lets fly. It's, it's really awesome to be around and really emotional. I love it, hearing him sing. I always I get quite emotional listening to it. It's just, he looks he's so effortless, his neck's all relaxed and his mouth's open. These amazing notes are coming out with so much power and clarity and finesse. Um, Chris Hillier is, um, is Jupiter, who's the other lead in the show, who is really has got a gorgeous character and a and beautiful tone to his voice and um, and uh, a great comic actor and um, he's been great to watch too and um, just see them all discover the characters and um, in my world we always deal with um, dialogue as part of our scenes and then we sing a song. I think in the opera world that's not so much been the case before so it's, it's great watching the opera opera stars dealing with you know the dialogue side of things and how they've grown and how they've you know worked their characters up. If you want to introduce new people to, an, to the opera world I think this is a perfect perfect entry because it's well Offenbach this is written I think in 1856 Offenbach is really along with Gilbert and Sullivan Offenbach's the French version of the Gilbert and Sullivan of England um, is probably the granddaddy to musical theatre so really it's right it's where what I do really started so this is as close to musical theatre I think as the opera company probably gets as and to opera gets and it's operetta so it's bawdy 
it's um, a bawdy, witty romp. It's got some local references, so it's Australianised to a degree. It's very current. Um, the costumes are outrageous. Um, I said in one interview that now, this is something for the whole family. Before I'd seen the costumes, like for instance, we've got some members of the company that um, hardly have anything on for the finale, and um, a lot of phallic symbols. But it's not. I don't want that to put anyone off. It's just camp. It's in English. It's funny, um, and some of the performances are just out of this world. Rachel Durkin you know, is just uh, sorry, <laughs> Rochelle Durkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'd kill me for that. Keep that in. Um, and play it to her. Um, is hilarious and has got one of the best voices I've ever heard. So it's, it's got stacks of people.